Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. We begin with an artist who says she is, quote, obsessed with exposing what lies beneath the surface, unquote. She layers visual activism into her work and weaves symbolism into each design. Her series, Rewriting History, consists of photographs that look like paintings and period gowns made out of paper. Joining us now is Haitian American visual artist Fabiola. Jean-Louis, you are the artist in residence at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum here in Boston. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So one of your beautifully crafted dresses and six photographs are on display at the Gardner and your designs have, have deeper meanings, layered messages built into your work. Um, describe what we see and what is not immediately obvious in this work, it's called Garden Dress 2. The dress, if you're just looking at the dress, it looks like, um, you know, there's no real story behind it because we already know what the narrative would, would, would be. The assumption is that it would not be a black woman wearing it. Mm -hmm. And so it became important for me to change that narrative and, or to vandalize old narratives by placing black women in paper dresses to tell a different story about injustice, about hope, memory. Um, and so paper, even as a material, became very important for me to work with. Mm. I had a chance to see it at the uh, uh, ISG up close, and it's so delicate. It's paper, but it looks just like fabric. It's yeah. so intricate. How long did it take to put that piece together? It takes a long time. So that dress currently on view, that is the second version of the dress. So in total, um, for that design, I've probably put a year into mm. making it. So the first dress that was in the photograph, worn in the photograph, um, which eventually became destroyed after the photo shoot and uh, being exhibited. Mm -hmm. uh, and then learning new ways to work with the dress with the material and then remaking it again. Um, and so I would say five or six months. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. If you would explain more about how visual activism is present in your work, and we're gonna show Madame Beauvoir's painting here. Another beautiful piece. So activism looks like many different things. Mm -hmm. um, I think that as a, as a visual artist and maker, it is my responsibility to um, take part in activism in the best way that I can through vis visualization. And so I use paper to help me do that, um, to talk about injustice. Mm -hmm. And so for Madame Bavard's painting, um, it was a wonderful opportunity to not only show imagery from the past, something that I knew many people would be aware of, um, but then to somehow use the dress and the material to do so. And so she becomes that, that figure, that reminder mm. of the past. If we could put that uh, image back up, when I first saw it, the, the first layer of the piece I saw was her dressed beautifully. But as I looked closer into the painting, I saw that she had that image on her easel of that very famous image of the African-American um, male yes. who had all the whips, uh, scars on his back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Gordon is, a f is that photograph that we, many of us know of. Um, and I really wanted to use that because of how recognizable it is. Mm -hmm. And, and so I knew that I wanted the subject to be looking at Gordon, but then how would I use that, uh, those scars? And it was perfect because her back and his back sure. were in communication. And it's a juxtaposition of beauty and something awful. Absolutely. In the same image. So um, you create uh, costumes uh, uh, as well as sculptures made entirely out of paper. And this next work is called Violin of the Dead. And you can see the very intricate design in the instrument. Uh, talk more about how paper became your medium. Paper is a very special material. It is, it functions like no other in our world, and not just American society, but in our world. Um, I really was thinking about working with material that really was able to change in so many ways, uh, meaning the kind of meanings that we assign to it. And so 
paper was perfect because in one instance it's currency to buy human bodies uh, in the next instance it's the paper that the bible is written is on, written on. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look at other religions like the quran the same thing uh, so the power of paper really was the material that was going to do that mm -hmm. that for me um, let's talk about this next piece. It's called Magical, Moody, and Mysterious. You know, just some of the the words that people use to describe your work. Um, what is your inspiration behind this piece? Uh, Marie Antoinette is dead. So I really wanted to reimagine Marie Antoinette. And I use that title as kind of trickery because that is not a original painting of Marie Antoinette. But I used the name because it was a um, another recognizable thing. And I really wanted to talk about greed and excess and things like that. But then I also wanted to bring into the picture the things that black communities have lost mm -hmm. throughout time um, as um, identity. One of those things for us are spiritual practices. And mm -hmm. so in that painting, I put the small little altar there. I, I put the, the quote unquote voodoo doll in her lap mm -hmm. um, to start talking about identity. And, and it's a juxtaposition again of images. Exactly. Very layered and you have to look close to see that symbolism that you've built into these beautiful pieces. That's right. And the, the subject is sitting in her power. She's, she's not sitting as a victim. She's sitting as someone who is claiming space and is is very joyful and um, is owning her identity as well. Now you have some thoughts about labeling. Uh, how do you feel about being referred to as a black female artist? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I honestly, I don't mind because my avatar, that's what I call it, my avatar is Haitian, is a woman, um, is an artist. The only thing that I've really worked to change in calling myself an artist is I've switched that for maker. Mm -hmm. I prefer maker because that's really what I do. But everything else, I think, you know, it's accurate. It, I guess for my avatar, that's fine. It works. Labels, 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 labels. You yeah. know, but the new people need to categorize. People always need to put yes, people into to a understand, little. Yes, to understand. Yes, understand. Mm -hmm. But as as the work pushes forward, labels really start to shed away. Now, what message do you hope people who experience your work will receive? I honestly, I want my, my viewers to experience my work through feelings, memory, to remember something that is so much deeper than the surface. Mm -hmm. My goal is always to get to the soul and the heart of things, and that's the, mace, the most important thing for me. Well, the pieces are breathtaking. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Fabiola Jean-Louis, Rewriting History, is on display at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum through January 15th.